Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. Some terrifying moments for a group of four people out on the water at Huguenot Park this afternoon. We understand two people were thrown from their jet ski, two others thrown from their kayaks. We just learned about this arrest about 40, 45 minutes ago and rushed down here to police headquarters. Right now, investigators are staying pretty tight lipped about many of the details of the case. We don't know when this arrest was made or where it was made. And we talk about rip currents. You hear the warnings every year, and it just happens so fast. They're so dangerous. Like this turning your back. To your purse left wide out in the open. Family and friends say a final goodbye today to 13 year old Tatiana Mitchell, who was killed in an accidental shooting nearly two weeks ago. Firecrackers like these, Roman candles, even things called the red wave, anything that can explode or shoot up into the air. We're actually downtown at police headquarters tonight. This is where Avery Wood was brought in handcuffs. The width of the hole in the gym mat that Kendrick was found in was 14 inches, and we measured this trash can, and that is the same width as this trash can. Hundreds of volunteers grabbed a rake and a little bit of paint and put an extra shine on one Arlington school. Really Can't get right. enough of those stories. Love so, those kids. All right. Well, still to come, an event giving hope to babies born a little too soon. Yeah. So only those with grilled smokers and then a really big appetite need to do a pie. Sign me up. Well, for all the ladies out there looking for a potential mate, how does this sound? He <laughs> likes to hunt, fish, and by the way, he just happens to be the president of the largest country in the world. About 30 people started that march here at Hemming Plaza with little more than backpacks, some extra shoes, and some water bottles in hand. The owner here at VIP Motors says that he's out more than $5,000 this evening, all because of thieves. They used a screwdriver just like this to break the ignition. Police are trying to get a murder off the streets tonight after a cleaning worker was shot and killed, all during a robbery attempt early this morning at a popular Avondale restaurant. We're digging deeper tonight into a crash that killed a Lake City couple and sent their three-year-old grandson to the hospital. It happened at the intersection of US 90 and Interstate 10. Passengers who walked away from the crash are sharing some of their terrifying details of their experience after a 10-hour flight from South Korea. Amazingly, though, 305 people on board managed to survive. I just knew we were going to have a crash, and I thought I was going to die. Now, of course, the investigation continues tonight into the deadly crash landing of Asiana Airlines Flight 214. And as Martha Shade tells us, some of the most important evidence has now made its way to Washington for analysis. Tom Stephanie Thornton says that she thought Donald Smith was still serving time for trying to kidnap her daughter back in 2009 and was absolutely shocked when she saw his mugshot on the evening news. Now, tonight, she says the Periwinkle case has not only forced her little girl to relive what Donald Smith did to her, but says that her daughter blames herself for what happened to Cherish. He personated himself as a DCF worker. It started with a phone call, one Stephanie Thornton says she'll never forget. And read me an ID number and, I mean, just convinced me all the way that he was with Department of Children and Family. It was June of 2009 when the McClenney mother says registered sex offender Donald Smith called her and her mother-in-law's home, claiming to be a DCF investigator, looking into allegations that her daughter Christina had been molested by her grandfather and then asked to speak with the then 10-year-old. He asked her if she had hair down there, asked her what size bra she wore, and she was crying. She didn't say nothing back to him. She gave the phone to her grandmother. And after the grandmother spoke with Donald Smith and told her that they had to meet at McDonald's to, for him to get Christina to take her to get checked. In an effort to keep her little girl from having to relive the trauma and testify in court, Thornton says Smith accepted a plea deal. It's a decision she says haunts the now 13-year-old Christina. According to this police report, Smith remembered making that phone call and told investigators that at the time he had been on the last day of a three-day binge on crack cocaine. But he couldn't explain why Thornton's phone number was saved under favorites in his cell phone. She feels guilty like she should have went to court and stood up in front of this man and maybe this little girl would still be here today. She hasn't left the house since Saturday. She's been right at my neighbor's right behind here. She don't want to be out in public. She hasn't been eating since, well, since Saturday. 
She called me today while I was at work crying. As the cherished Periwinkle case continues to unfold, Thornton says she's more determined than ever to make sure Smith never leaves a prison cell again. Now, the Thorntons have not spoken to the Periwinkle family, but they certainly want them to know that they support them and they are there if they need anything at all. We asked the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office why the Thorntons were not notified of Smith's release. A spokesperson tells us because of the nature of the charges involved in the case, it did not meet the standards under the law for notification. Of course, you can understand why they're a little upset that they weren't notified, but that's the law. According to the crime lab report, the width of the hole in the gym mat that Kendrick was found in was 14 inches. And we measured this trash can, and that is the same width as this trash can. Now, the medical examiner measured Kendrick shoulder to shoulder, and they found he was about 19 inches. So 19 inches, that's about the same width as this trash can. So how does someone who is 5'10", 170 pounds, with those dimensions, fit through a 14-inch hole like this? Well, their numbers, as parents say, simply don't add up. You'll move them out before your child. And whatever it takes for us to get to the truth, that's what we got to do. The Johnson family isn't moving mountains, but they are moving a lot of cash. $8,000 to exhume their son's body in an effort to prove he was murdered. It's a nightmare. Families shouldn't have to, you know, go through all this just to get the correct answer. In January, 17-year-old Kendrick Johnson was found dead at his high school gym, upside down, rolled up in a gym mat. Lowndes County Sheriff's deputies believe the teen slipped while reaching for a shoe and became stuck in the mat when no one was around. The medical examiner said he died from positional asphyxia, smothered by his own body weight. Now the family is banking on the results of that second autopsy to show this was no accident. The truth must come out. He was a loving son, kind, you know, a lot of people loved him, but it was somebody who hated him. According to this report by the Valdosta Crime Lab, blood was found on the gym wall and appeared to be on paper towels in the girls' restroom nearby. While it states, quote, there appeared to be no signs of blunt force trauma on Johnson's face or body, the paramedics report stated there was bruising to the right side of Johnson's jaw. It's sad, it makes me sad to know that uh, my son, grandson, as young as he was, his life is, is a total waste, gone, you know, he had, and he had a bright future ahead of him. As many in the community continue to stand behind their fight for closure, Kendrick's grandfather had this response when we asked how he would react if this second autopsy comes back with the same results. Well, we just have to deal with it. We don't know, we don't know what will happen from that. We just have to deal with it day by day. That's what we're doing now. And when we reached out to the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office for comment tonight, they released this statement saying, quote, the Sheriff's Office conducted a thorough investigation and welcome any independent review of the investigation. As for when we could know the results of that second autopsy, that's still several weeks away.